Hello, ladies. Welcome back to another Tea Time Tuesday. Before we get into our lesson, let's go ahead and have some prayer. Lord God, I just want to thank you for another day. I thank you for this opportunity, God, to just come before you, um, to worship you, to glorify you, to honor you, God, and most importantly, to learn more about you, God, to know you better than we did before and to draw closer to you as we continue to build our relationship with you. Um, Lord God, I pray that you continually open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word. I pray that you would lend us your wisdom so we may comprehend the things that we are studying on today. Lord God, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit um, as he would just take over in this lesson and help me to teach this lesson in a way that it can be understood by those listening, and most importantly, Lord, in a way that gives you glory. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. Okay. So, uh, I first want us to start with our scripture reading. Okay, so... um, Y'all have to forgive me because y'all know my ADHD be taking over and I have a hard time remembering anything now. But um, I know I wanted to start uh, lessons from a devotional book called Becoming a Woman Who Walks with God, Abiding in Christ, okay. Becoming a Woman Who Walks with God, Abiding in Christ, and it's a must of devotionals, which means that we, we, given that we do one lesson a week, we'll be here. <laughs> we'll be here, and you never know, the Lord might take us a little bit further. But first thing, let's go to First John. And just for context purposes, we're going to be reading um, 1 John chapter 2 all the way to chapter 3, verse 5. I don't know why I hear that voice. It's like, why are we doing all that reading? Don't worry about that. Like, that's your first problem. (laughs) That's your first problem. Like, you ask the wrong questions. The first one, like... You know, and that's okay. Like, the Lord had to check me, too, recently, because I started a, a, a devotional plan. And one of the day, now it's on Leviticus. And, I'm, you know, Leviticus kind of has a lot of uh, repetition. It's talking about all the, at least in the beginning part of Leviticus or so, all the laws, um, the the uh, things they had to do, right? And so I'm like, and it had like six, uh, chapters or so a day to read, and one I'm like, that's a lot I read, and then it's like, ma'am, the Lord of I me mean, was like, ma'am, <laughs> you know, it's like, do you want to be a master diver or do you want to be the child in the shallow end of the pool, right, in the kiddie pool? You're not even in the pool. You just you in that little plastic thing. Like, do you want to be the master diver of, the, of my word? Or do you want to stay in the kiddie pool all your life? Because you could stay in that kiddie pool, but eventually you're going you gonna to get too big for that. <laughs> you know, you're going to outgrow that. And then you're going to be walking around looking at everybody else crazy, like, why am I uh, so throw it? Yeah, you throw it off because you're spiritually hungry. You can't be on the bottle forever. Stop that. <laughs> So I understand. I do. Well, like I said, we're reading this for context purposes. Okay, but we're going to be focusing uh, primarily on uh, chapter 2. And there's a specific verse I'm going to, we're going to be looking at, okay? Okay. So I'm going to read first. Uh, in the King James, and then we'll be comparing with the Amplified. 
So this is First John, starting at chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same have not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Ooh, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've been wanting to like pause. <laughs> but it's like now I gotta read I gotta read through. I gotta read through. Ooh. I don't wanna say something right there, but like nope, let it marinate. Okay. So twenty four. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. 
And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Okay, I do have to pause because it's like the nagging feeling, right? Or I won't say a nagging, but a nudging. So I, I need to pause here because, first of all, verse 26, right? These things I have written unto you concern them that seduce you. Or in my footnotes here, try to deceive you. And then follow that with verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it have taught you, ye shall abide in him. Right? This is not saying, oh, you don't need a preacher, you don't need, you don't need any pastors, uh, we don't need any Bible study teaching. That's not what he's saying. Think about what he just said. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. You don't need somebody to, to teach you, oh, this is how you get the Holy Spirit. Which, believe it or not, there's people out, you know, they're out there. We'll just put it that way. Oh, let me teach you how to do your shot. Let me teach you how to do your dance. Let me teach... Hmm? I feel like we've mentioned that before, right? If it is something that is within my ability to do, that's not of God. That's flesh. Because let me tell you something. Holy Spirit is more than capable of handling himself. And when he takes over, when you truly got the Spirit, baby, you can't sit down. When Holy Spirit starts stirring up in you, like really stirring up in you, it's like, whoop. I have to get up. I can sit there and try to fight them all day long, but I, you know, I'm not. I have. It's like no. So these, this is the things that he's he's telling them. Like, no, Holy Spirit is in you. That anointing is in you. Because don't forget, Hebrews tells us, okay. There's a process in, in discipleship where you become the teacher. So we have to stop saying, oh, it's the pastor's job. It's the Bible study teacher's job. It's everybody's job. It's everybody's job. And we'll get to that in a minute. But here, talking about whole of holy things, it's like you can seek Holy Spirit for that. Ask the Lord. Ask him. Like, you know, some of us will go to people for every little thing and every little decision. It's like, did you even try? Like, did you really seek God on that? Or are you just looking for co-signers? Like, what, what are we doing? So that I I had to pause there because I'm like, yeah, you got people out here now that are wreck. I mean, they are out here preaching some stuff. I just saw a video, I think it was yesterday, listening to it at work. And the girl, you know, she used to be a witch and practiced all, all manner of things and started revealing, you know, stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, for somebody who came for that, I gave my life to Christ, I'm in the church, and I'm seeing people doing things that relate back to witchcraft, and so I'm exposing it like, hey, that's evil, that's demonic. I used to practice that. I don't do it anymore because God called me out of that. So you shouldn't do <laughs> do that, you know, Christian. You know, And it's like there's people really out here that are like, oh, it's okay because you know, you put the stamp of Christian on it, and now it makes it fine. It's no longer, you know, an evil thing. No, it's still evil. What? what? You can't make the bad tree good, and you can't make the good tree bad. Either it's bad or it's not. Either it's evil or it's not. And if God and his word says evil, it's evil. Why are we out here? Hmm. See, now I'm getting started. So 
Anyway, <laughs> that is what, you know, John is, is stressing to them, right? The Apostle John is, is telling them, like, the same Holy Spirit in me is the same Holy Spirit in you. Right? Yes, we still need teachers. We still need a shepherd, right, over us. There's a reason for why the Lord has, you know, structured it that way. Um, although you could argue if if you study, do your research and study on the church, like, mm, it wasn't exactly <laughs> the plan God had. It wasn't exactly the design that he called for. Right? It's like there's still a need for teachers. But we're when we're talking about these types of things. It's like, no, the Holy Spirit in me. Right? Like, you know, like, yeah, I was talking to God and he told Well, God didn't tell me that. Well, okay. <laughs> like, maybe he wasn't talking to you. He was talking to me, so you know, or vice versa. God told me that, you know, you was going to be my wife. Oh, really? Because he didn't share any of that with me. He did not tell me at all that you was going to be my husband. And the God that I know is not a God of confusion or disorder. So I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. <laughs> Ooh. So let's go to John 3. <laughs> This is chapter 3, starting to verse 1, King James. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Mm, i got to pause again. Oh, okay. <laughs> think about that. Your faith. This, now I'm thinking about Abraham, right? Where Abraham believed and it was counted unto him as righteousness. But I think it's also in Hebrews. Correct? Look, young. Well, somebody can text me. <laughs> you know, it's in Hebrews. Abraham believed, and it was counted unto him as righteousness when God shared this promise with him that he did not get to see. The low key, he didn't even get to benefit from, like his descendants, descendants, descendants. You know, we are now, we're the descendants of Abraham. We are still benefiting from the, the promise. But because he believed, right, and then here is that imparting of faith comes from God, counted him towards righteousness. So it's like, remember, and even in, uh, y'all, where is it? Ephesians, look, I'm trying to, I got my physical Bible. I got both Bibles, <laughs> physical and the digital. <laughs> and we are Bibled up today. Okay. Ephesians 2, there we go, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Uh, this is King James again. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, King James Version. That faith is what saves you. But remember, like we were learning with, you know, about the faith study, right? Faith comes from God. But it starts with my belief. And then it's talking about this hope. When I choose to hope in that promise, to believe in that promise, now it's like, oh, it purifies me. And it makes me pure as the Lord is pure. Okay. So continuing on, so verses 4 and 5. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no 
sin. And that is 1 John chapter 2 through 3 verse 5. <laughs> King James Version. Okay. So again, we, we've got some context here. you got a lot of things to meditate on. Because when I tell you there was so many times, I'm like, ooh, I want to stop. <laughs> I want to stop there. I want to read this. It's like, nah, nah, nah. You only got so much time. I got to make sure I stay on time. Oh, man. So first, let's look at verse 4. This is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. Right. Now, we do hear some things reiterated because we just read verse 5, right, talking about Jesus, his appropriation for our sins, right? And in him is no sin because, again, I believe it's in Hebrews where he is our high priest. He was tempted in every way that we were tempted, and he did not sin, which made him the perfect sacrifice. No blemish, right? When you went to give your sin offering or any type of offering to the Lord, it could not have any blemishes. Like the animal could not have a single blemish. Okay. Couldn't be sickly. None of that. Okay. And so, again, like, well, we'll go up a little bit, right? So let's let's read down. Let's start at verse 1 and read down to verse 4. Uh, this time, I'm going to read it in the Amplified, okay? So 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Amplified. My little children, believers, dear ones, I am writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate who will intercede for us with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the upright, the just one, who conforms to the Father's will in every way, purpose, thought, and action. Like, the Amplified wants to make it very clear. Because even Jesus said that, right? I only do what the Father tells me to do. That's the kind of obedience that we also have to have, to where it's like, I only do what the Father tells me to do. A lot of us out here talking about, yeah, gee, you know, I just, I feel like that's your first problem. You feel like, <laughs> I think that, mm, did you confirm it with the word? Did you confirm that with some wise, godly counsel? Because, you know, I found out recently, I'm on TikTok and I'm sitting there like, you know what? Because I've been doing a little Spanish diaries. Well, you know what I realized in that moment, like, I'm going to these people, and it's like what I really need is some, some godly, like, spiritual advice. And the advice I'm getting right now, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that's not, that's not what I need. It's like, well, stop going to carnal people for spiritual stuff. Anyway. We have to be on that level of obedience to where it's like, I only do what he tells me to do. I only say what the Holy Spirit leads me to say. I'm not going outside of his will. Right? Even in my thoughts, my actions, and especially purpose, because we love to misuse and abuse that scripture, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them. Uh, for for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, his purpose, his purpose, not yours, his purpose. So all the things that are according to his purpose, not the stuff that you went out and did and was like, oh, well, God will work it out for the good. No. No. Was it according to his purpose, or was there something that you went in? Oh, okay. Woo. Moving on. <laughs> Verse 2. <laughs> like, I got to get through this last thing. Verse 2. And he, that same Jesus, is the appropriation for our sins, 
the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature, our worldliness, our lifestyle, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. Now, again, I do I do be loving the Amplified, but I got to tell you something. When it comes to verse 2, I prefer the King James. Right? Because in the King James, I'm trying to see if I can. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I'm doing it. It's like, girl, your Bible right here. <laughs> Trying to pull it on the e I was like, it's right here. Um, in the King James, and he is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world, including the people who do not believe in him, including the <laughs> you know the atheists, including that backwards person, like including the people that you have a bias towards that you can't stand. He gave his life for the entire world. People who ain't even here yet. Okay. So it was like, no, not just the believer. You know, because it's like, yeah, that he died for everyone, even the people who was in there mocking him as he's dying. Dying on the cross, and it's like, I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to give my life for them too. And I think back to that little girl who was like, if this is what it means, having dealt with people, you know, who said they were Christian, they weren't really true believers. We're going to get to that too. <laughs> you weren't really true believers. And you're sitting there feeling some type of way to the point where you are so hurt and you feel so rejected by people who are supposed to know God, people who are supposed to be loving and kind and were not. The <laughs> complete opposite. I was like, well, this is what it means. They can have that. I don't want anything to do with God. I don't want anything to do with the church. I'm done. I did everything possible to to fight against that. Didn't want to hear none about the scripture. And now there's like a thankfulness. Like, I'm glad that there was room for me at the table. That he still sent that invitation, you know, that call over my life. Like, I'm calling you to a relationship with me. This girl talking about she done with me. She don't even know what I'm about to use her for. Like, I'm thankful for all the times my grandmother prayed. People who were praying for me, I didn't even know they were praying for me. Like, I'm grateful for those prayers. Like, I am a testament. If you got somebody that you know right now that you look at them and you feel like all hope is lost, what God do you serve? Because I serve a God who can't fail. And as long as I believe in prayer like God, however long it takes, however long it's got to be, I may not even live long enough to see it happen in that person's life. But I'm going to celebrate when I see them with me, you know, in, in glory. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of, that kind of power to believe. Like nobody was worthy, you know. He didn't just come here for the people who believe. No, I mean, came for everybody. Okay, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today, one of them days, I get. Okay, verse three. And this is how we know daily by experience that we have come to know Him, to understand Him, and be more deeply acquainted with Him. If we habitually keep focused on his precepts and obey his commandments, teachings. And finally, verse 4 in the Amplified, whoever says, I have come to know him, 
but does not habitually keep focused on his precepts and obey his commandments, teachings, is a liar. And the truth of divine of the divine word is not in him. First John chapter two verses one through four, amplified version. So I did a lot more reading than what I did with y'all this morning. And it was something about that, like the Holy Spirit immediately was like, notice the verses where it's talking about lies. Uh, deceit, right, liar. Like, I want you to look at those verses in particular, right, in this book. <laughs> and so immediately my attention turned towards chapter 1 of this book, right? So First John chapter 1, verses 6, 8, and 10. Now, we're going to work backwards a little bit, but that's okay. So looking at verse 10 first, okay, this is the last verse in in this chapter. I feel like I've quoted it quite a few times because, I, you know, may, I've been needing it for myself. <laughs> but I also just feel like in general it's a really good reminder. Okay, so verse 10, well, first... Let me go, let me read uh, chapter 2, verse 4 again, right? Whoever says, this is the Amplified, whoever says I have come to know him does not habitually keep focused on his precepts and obey his commandments, teachings, is a liar, and the truth of the divine word is not in him. Now, again, we look in the King James, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Remember, Jesus is the word. He's the Logos. Because it says the word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. Here comes the train. The word was with God, and the word was God. Let me make sure I'm quoting that right. You know, I don't like misquoting. Yeah, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's John chapter 1, verse 1, King James Version, right? Yeah, my, everything's falling out of my Bible now. <laughs> okay. So he is the truth. He is the Word, right? Abide in me, and I in you, as a vine cannot bear, just as a vine cannot bear fruit of itself, neither can ye except ye abide in me, right? I think that's John 15 and 4, but I I think I may have misquoted it. So I'm, I apologize. The weird, you know, we got verse 4, right? So let's, let's look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 10 in the Amplified. If we say that we have not sinned, refusing to admit acts of sin, we make him out to be a liar by contradicting him, and his word is not in us. So already it's like, hmm, John is reiterating a point here. The apostle is reiterating this point If I'm going against his word and I'm not keeping his commandments, that means now, now I am make, I'm calling him a liar, right? <laughs> I'm calling him a liar. It's like, and his word is not in me. So I have a little, a small little side note here. Okay. By not keeping his commandments, we are disobeying him. That's sin. If we say we aren't, we are calling Jesus a liar and his word is not in us. The first thing that just popped up in my mind, astrology. That was one of the things that, you know, the young lady talked about uh, in the video I shared. It was a video. She did an interview 
is on the Praise Channel, The Deep End. To be honest, you know, I'm kind of 50-50 on, on The Deep End because of the fact that I just like where I am in my life now. I'm like, nah, I need to listen to podcasts where they have way more scripture, more word. Like, I need it. But every now and then, like, you know, I will listen to some of the interviews because it's like, oh, you learn something. Still, you know, learn some things, right? And so you know, I, I, was, I used to be one of the people, like, oh, I'm a cancer, you know, and then in other countries, their zodiac has a whole year, right? Um, I think both in, like, because I study Japanese and Chinese, and in both of those cultures, my year is year of the dragon. <laughs> Which, you know, after she explained everything with astrology and then even referred the, the scriptures and everything, and I'm like, ooh, yep. And it's funny how even with that, you try to make little little concessions, right? Little, little you know, oh, well, you know, with this, but this one, though, And so even though I remember um, one of my coworkers that, you know, I work with at camp, she had shared a verse that was like in the the New Living Translation. So it was plain text. You couldn't sit there and be like, oh, I don't understand. No, you wouldn't understand it because it's talking in plain English. (laughs) And it just flat out was like, do not you know, try to use these things to tell the future. Don't be worshiping these things because that's not of me. That, that is, goes against my will, right? And now I can't think of the, the verse. I got to go find it. I got to go find it. But I remember after reading that, it was like, oh. So after that, I slowly, like, started pulling away from being like, oh, I'm a cancer. Now I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, you know. But again, right, if the word is revealing something to you and you decide to disregard that that truth, you're now disobeying his commandments, right? When you try to make little justifications for things, well, I mean, it's not like I really worshiping it i mean you you're identifying as that though how are you more comfortable with saying you know being under your zodiac but you don't want to be recognized as a child of god you will go and read the little horoscope these people don't know nothing about you know <laughs> even that was kind of scary you start talking about, you know, the demonic forces. I mean, that's a, a real thing in case, you know, we're going to have to hold, have a whole conversation about that because I used to be that person. And looking back, I'm like, I don't know how you get, I don't know how you can say that you are a Christian, that you are a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, and then talking about, well, I don't believe in all that, the demons and stuff. I don't believe in all that. What? Again, used to be that person. It had an experience. It was like, oh, wow, like this stuff is real. Yeah, like Satan is real. All that is real. Like it's, it's in the Bible. I don't know why. If you believe that the Bible is true and the Bible is real, oh, well, that was back in that time. No, baby, he he said he was saying yesterday, today, and forever. It's like that means God don't change. So the same standard he got back then, the same standard today, same standard going to be tomorrow, same standard forever. Like, evil ain't going nowhere? What? Oh, Lord. Anyway. <laughs> so little stuff like that. And, you know, reading it, I'm like, ooh. Then there was like a wrestling, right? Because now you know the truth. Are you going to obey the truth? Or are you going to reject it? And for a long time, I was I was rejecting it until finally, I would say maybe around this year or so, Maybe a little bit earlier, but definitely around this year. It's like, you know what? I don't even, if there's an option to put, like, my Zodiac, I don't even put it on there because of the fact that I'm like, no, I don't want anything to do with anything that is of 
of witchcraft or, you know, I, so I don't want nothing to do with that. You talking about you consulting demons and stuff? But no, we're done, <laughs> right? But that, you know, my Chinese bowl with my Chinese, I'm like, I'm a dragon. And literally, I remember the Lord took me to Revelation about the beast, right, and how Satan, right, in the form of this dragon with, like, ten. <laughs> he was like, think about what you're saying, what you are saying you're coming up under, what you want to identify with. Now, ladies, we talked about that before, right, in one of the, one of the studies. You'll be what you see. You'll become what you behold. But you can't be what you don't see, and you can't become what you don't behold, right? That first part, you'll be what you see, you'll become what you behold. If that is the thing that's like, oh, I'm this, and, you know, our personality is that, okay, but what is that associated with? You know, even that, people get a little touchy, like, oh, well, you know, that's their cult, and no. Stop it. That ain't got nothing to do with no culture. That that's some way that's some way out there. There are a lot of evil things that have become a part of our own culture. We sure don't like to talk about that in the US, but it's true. And we all just supposed to be fine with it. Why? Because that's the way the world operates. It's of the world. So this 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 is not about culture. You're talking about something totally different. Okay. Well, it ain't got nothing to do <laughs> with your culture. And even in even in that point, it's like God is greater than your culture. He's greater than your race, your ethnicity. All that has to come down. He has to come before all of that because he's above all of that. <laughs> I have to submit it all to him. But anyway, he showed me the passage. He's like, but you're saying you identify. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and again, is that wrestling like, but I, but I really think the dragon is cool. And... He's just like, okay. And then that video came out, and he was like, you know what? All right. <laughs> because it's like, how many times can he tell you? And you just flat out, I mean, at that point, you're like, nah, God, you lying. Nah, somebody confused. Nah, that can't be right. Halloween's coming up, right? That's a huge, huge debate, you know, in, in the Christian space, in the church. But it's like, okay, he told you not to participate in anything in regards to pagan worship. <laughs> and I know people are like, well, why do y'all celebrate Christmas? It, it has all these, I'm like, first of all, Christmas ain't about the tree and the presents and all the other people edit that. Christmas is the birth of Christ. Like, we celebrate the fact that our Savior was born. We are literally celebrating the fact that he was born. It could be, you know, December 28th. Like, we still going to celebrate <laughs> the fact that he was born. He he came. All that other stuff, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't celebrate that. But I do celebrate my Savior, right? There's, there's a difference now. But this year, that that particular holiday, baby, you talking about people who literally, and again, do some research, people who literally on that day are praying that evil will prevail. Praying for evil to win. I don't know how, you know, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. So again, if the scripture is there, and the scripture telling you don't do this, and you turn around and be like, "Oh, but 
okay, you calling him a liar. You're not doing what he's commanded you to do. The biggest one, right, the Great uh, Commission. We've talked about that multiple times in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, where we see where Jesus himself has commanded us to go and make disciples. The command is to make disciples. So if we are not working towards that, if that is not our goal, you're disobeying him. Again, you call him a liar. Like, no, I don't don't think he meant that for me. That's a pastor's job. Now, then, you know, I, I, I'd show up, and that's, you know, I came. That's good enough. You call him a liar. Anyway, <laughs> I hear the front. Yeah. Anyway, hey, again, don't get mad. Look, again, if you hear the truth. And instead of receiving it with humility and, uh, you know, some kind of, like, remorse, something that makes you say, oh, wow, okay, Lord, I, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Again, I get it because, uh, again, astrology, you know, Went to the, the the girl who was like, okay, now she lived this and she was doing these things, and if she's saying this is evil, <laughs> like if you will not listen to the person who's lived it and the Lord is speaking through this person, like what else do you need at that point? You just flat out being defiant, like, well, I refuse. I'm not moving on this. I'm gonna die on this hill. You show sure will. You show sure will, and you will not see glory because. Hey, that's that's what you chose. (laughs) That's what you chose to do. God bless you. All right, well, you just going to have to pray for me. You know how people get. And it's like, careful, (laughs) because prayer does work. Like, okay. Now you, you look all around and you get all uncomfortable. Right, you have had so many people give you scripture and tell you where, like, okay, you know this this man that you're living with, that's not your husband, and God does not condone this, and, you know, sis, I mean, if he really is for you, he would do the right, he would do, he would man up, and he would commit to you. Well, we don't need all that. Okay. Well, the word said, okay, well, all right. Okay. God bless you. Look, I, I may not have hit hit you, your particular vice or or struggle today. Doesn't mean it's not coming. Because I guarantee you, just like the Lord be coming for me and be calling me out on stuff almost all the time now. <laughs> If you are spending any kind of time in his presence, there are some things that he's like, hey, we need to address this area <laughs> right? because this this is making your foundation unstable. You're going, this is going to cause you to collapse. So we're going to have to do some, we, I'm going to need you to attend, to, we got to attend to this area. Like you got to let me come in and address this area, but I'm not going to do it until you let me. Don't, oh, ooh, ooh. It just came to my mind. Don't be a pharaoh. Yeah, something just, I I saw the the other day, right? Because I kind of wondered that. It's like, Lord, you hardened pharaoh's heart. Now, true, it led to, you know, the, the freedom of his people and, Again, we're now the descendants of Abraham. So it led to some really great things in the end, but it's still like the Lord, you could have easily softened his heart and been like, you know what, y'all, y'all right. Let me let y'all go. And then 
was somebody was like, was it on TikTok? I can't even remember. But I think it was on TikTok. But the guy, he was like, you know, when you are dead set on I'm going to continue in this sin, I'm going to do this sin, you know, whatever, and you're just choosing to blatantly defy God after he's warned you again and again and again, he will give you over to that thing that you keep trying to chase after. And it's like, well, you got what you wanted. You know, <laughs> like, there's a passage. It's either in the book of Joshua, because I'm reading over that again, either in Joshua or it might have been after that or in Judges, where the Lord literally tells the children of Israel, Let, go cry out to the idols that you left me for. Let them save you. That's what you wanted. You didn't want to be with me. <laughs> So if that's what you want, I'm going to let you have what you want. They was getting, you know, stopped stopped out by their enemies, right? Because he told them way back, okay, if you disobey, if you decide to go against against me, I'm not going to protect you anymore. Like, you're not going to be protected from your enemies. You're going to be running from your enemies. Your your crops and everything is going to fail. You're going to have sickness and all these things. <laughs> so going all the way back, right? If we choose to disobey, right? Okay, I got to finish that point first about Pharaoh. The Lord is revealing something to you. He's showing you this is not of me. You need to let this go. And you continue to defy him. You're calling him a liar. It's like, okay, now there's evidence that the word is not in you, right? But the thing we I want to emphasize, the word has to be in you because that is what makes the difference. There are some other things, and it's not time to reveal those things yet. So when the Lord says time, then it will be time. But there are some other things that the Lord had to, he started showing me in my life was like, yep, this got to go. And again, me being defiant, um... Okay, you know, through other people, through other people. And I'm like, mm, okay, well, you know, the first person was kind of rough, you know, a little harsh. I mean, you don't even know me like that. Like, first of all, <laughs> first of all, who are you talking to? Like, you know. It was ugly. And so it was like, well, you know what, God, if they, if they give me, the truth, you know, because first it was like, well, they give me the truth. I can't argue again. It was like, well, they give me the truth in love. <laughs> you know, I can't argue with the word, you know, but you got to give it to me in love. I mean, you can't just be coming at me. And so he sent somebody else. And they gave me the truth in love. And it was on YouTube of all of all things. And, you know, it's just popping up and popping up and popping up. And finally, the Lord was just like, just watch, just watch and listen to what they got to say. And after the end of that, it was like, wow, I can't deny it anymore. <laughs> I, I cannot. I can't. You know? And so now it's just like, ooh, he, he starts showing things. I'm like immediately like just repenting. Immediately. I read some in, in Leviticus, the same Devo, I was like, ooh, all them chapters. <laughs> Being trifling. That's why I was like, yeah, I know, I understand. I've been having some trifling days too, but, you know, we got to grow. But there's even a part in Leviticus, uh, you know, where the Lord tells the people, if someone does something that goes against the word of God and they're not aware of it, 
when they become made aware, they are now guilty and they are to repent. You have been made aware. Romans, right? I think it's Romans 1 and 9 tells us we don't, we don't have any excuses. Like God took away all the excuses. I'm saying 1 and 9. I know it's in Romans 1. Look, let me look it up because make sure. Romans one. Let's see, I'm saying nine. Okay, Romans one in twenty. Uh, this is King James. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His. In- eternal power in Godhead so that they are without excuse. You ain't got no excuses. Your ignorance, all that, that's not an excuse. Right? And we especially don't have excuses. We have our word. So you say, I didn't know. Why don't you know? Now you you held accountable for that because you're supposed to be a steward, uh, a master craftsman of this word. That's what I say in Timothy skillful in the word of God. So, yeah, you should know it. How, ooh. Do you know that there was a statistic that said that 90% of atheists could recite verses like nobody's business, knew the Bible word for word? Whereas on the flip side, 90% of Christians did not. There's something wrong there. <laughs> okay. There's something wrong with that. How? The, how? Anyway, that's another. That's a whole other thing, too. Okay. So we need to have this word in us. And I see them over time, so let me quickly go to Galatians. Uh, Chapter 5, this is verses 16 and 17 in the Amplified. But I say, walk habitually. Notice we keep hearing that word habitually in the Amplified. You have to make it a habit. And habits don't happen overnight. You have to put these things into practice in order for it to become a habit. There are some sins that we do habitually. So much to the point where it's almost like second nature to you. But now that you've been called out of that darkness, right? Now that you have you are a new creation, you're a new create a new creature in Christ, it's like, no, nah, I can't go back to that. Because that's how I used to do things, that's what I used to say, that's how I used to think. That's how I used to act. That can't be, that's not the standard. Like, I got to live to God's standard now. I have to live to Jesus' standard. So we got we to gotta switch that up. We got to do something new. <laughs> hmm, but I can't do it myself. But we'll, you know, we'll get to that next time when we come back. So let me finish this, Lord. But I say walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance because i got to respond, right? And those little nudges, that urging, that voice that speaks speaks to you in your heart, like I have to respond to him. I can't be talking about, oh, lead me, but I'm just digging my heels in the ground. I'm sitting down. I'm like, no, I ain't moving on that. No, nah, you, nah, you, you miss me with that. <laughs> Why astrology keep popping back up? Maybe somebody else with a similar struggle. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. I'm, I'm still gonna call myself a Libra. I'm still a Cancer. Okay. Again, do some research. And you're gonna find out. Like you are aligning yourself with things that are not of, of the Lord. So what, who do you want to be? Do you want to be under this? Or do you want to be known as a child of God? 
you want to be known as his daughter. Make a decision because there is no in-between. Especially when we start dabbling in the things, talking about witchcraft and all types of things. Like, no, no, no. It's just some sign. And again, who do you think they're talking to? Who do you think they're consulting for these things? There is some sorcery and things that goes on there. Because the Lord has already spoken about that. But again, we can go in circles on that all day long. Just like the Lord had to do a work on my heart in that area, he's going to have to do a work on you too. But be careful what you, what you pray for. Careful what you say. Because you start getting to find like, well, I don't know. Well, we just going to have to see. Okay. God will show you better than he can tell you. You don't want to have to. I've already said that before, right? You don't want God to have to show you anything. Now, that all, do you understand? That's like testing the Lord, which you're not supposed to do. I well, he gonna have to. He he just going We just gonna see on that. You want to show me, okay? Didn't in one of the lessons we talked about his, how his Majesty is like a raging tempest, a violent, fierce storm, and you want him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the, the young people be saying, you don't want that smoke. You don't. You do not want those problems. But then again, maybe the Lord has to break you down. To, you understand, this ain't what you want. And I'm not talking about with him, but the thing that you keep trying to, to it's like if it really was not, I don't even know why I got it. Okay, but okay. If it was just some, you know, some little uh, fun little thing to do and some little signs and numbers, then why is it so hard for you to detach from it? Why you you suddenly feel yourself getting a little defensive about it? That's because there's a spiritual connection there, and it's becoming an idol in your in your heart. When your identity is more tied up in your horoscope than in great I am, that's a problem. So, hey, moving on. <laughs> All right, Lord, I got to read the verse over again. But I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit, seek him and be responsive to his guidance, and then you will certainly not carry out the desire of sinful of the sinful nature which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. Ouch. Verse 17, for the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit, and the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do. Again, we can have a whole lesson on that, but we ain't got time. We over time. So let me read this last verse, and then we're going to close out. So this is Psalm 34 and 8. I'm saying this last verse. I have one more after this or two more. Also in Psalm. Okay, so Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34, verse 8, amplified. We have to have his word in us because these are the things that happen as a result. If his word is not in me, then when I have that wrestling, that constant war, right, the flesh and the spirit are in opposition, I'm going to lose every time, every time. <laughs> like, we know we're, we're going to have some days where we lose. You're going to take an L. 
But if I'm taking an L every time in a specific area, like every single time I'm coming up with just losing, like I don't have any wins at all, that's a sign, right, that it's like, okay, I'm still carnal-minded in this area. I'm still living flesh in this area, and I need Holy Spirit. <laughs> I need the Lord to show me, like, okay, how to handle this. Because, however, I, I'm trying to do it in my power, and it, it clearly, <laughs> right, we can't do that. Now, my last little point here, right, we have to devour the word. So it's like, how do we get the word in us? We devour it, right? Oh, taste and see. I think in the King James, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? And amplified, oh, taste and see that the Lord, our God, is good. I feel like we I've mentioned it before about how you have to feast on the word of God. So how do we do that? Let's look at Psalm, Psalm 1, so the very first one. So Psalm 1, verse 2. And you know, for this, well, no, I'm going to go ahead and continue to amplify. So Psalm 1, verse 2, amplified. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings the same thing, the commandments, right? <laughs> he habitually meditates day and night. That word meditate, to chew on it, to to muse, to ponder, like you're spending some time really thinking about what you just read. You might have to go back a few times and read it again and, and kind of, you know, sad to get that, like, oh, all right. And then finally, Psalm chapter 4, so Psalm 4, verse 4, okay, Psalm 4, verse 4, and then the Amplified, it reads, Tremble with anger or fear and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Reflect on your sin and repent of your rebellion. (laughs) Psalm 4, verse 4, Amplified Version. Lately the challenge for me has been to be still and be quiet. Literally, the Lord was like, for someone who enjoys being in a quiet room, right, because I have moments where it's like I just need to be in a room where it's quiet and I'm by myself. It's like, oh, silence, right? It's like for somebody who really loves things being quiet, you sure do do a lot of talking in your mind. Your mind is just, your just thoughts are constantly going, 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 going. He's like, you really don't know. He's like, you think you know how to be still and be quiet, but you actually don't. So even this morning, he's like, I just need you to be still for a moment. I don't need you thinking about your schedule. I don't need you thinking about, you know, what you got to do today, this, that, and the other. I just need you to be still and be quiet. (laughs) Right. Reading over these scriptures, he's like, now, Read over that again. Really think about what's being said here. And just throughout the day, every now and then, like, hmm. Okay. So sometimes, you know, now, I don't know why. Okay. If you know that being a bit like, well, if I'm still, I'm going to fall asleep. Okay, well, that's why you need to get up. Some of us need to get up out of bed. However, when you know that you have sinned against God or you strayed away from the Lord, 
to the point where you can't even sleep properly, like it's keeping you up at night. Like you, you can't just go back to sleep on that. Because that conviction will be on you so bad, it will wake you up out of your sleep. You'll look up. I mean, it's early. You're trying to go back to sleep. You toss and turn it because you, you literally can't sleep at night. You can't get no rest because you have no peace. You left your peace behind. <laughs> right. Now, remember, we're always in the Father's hands, but sin becomes a wall. It becomes this thing, that a partition, right, that separates us from God. So you've been separated from the one who gives you peace. Like, you're not in his presence. We talked about that word, irene, right? Peace. And when we're in the presence of God, in his peace, we're prospering in him. We become prosperous in the Lord. Not just financially. I don't know why we always got to, you know, our hearts ain't in the right place. That's why. That's why we always got to clarify, right? Like that's that's when you have that true prosperity. Even when you you ain't got a dime in your name, been there, but you got so much peace and so much joy. That's just like you know what, God. I know it's gonna be okay. I know that you you got me, and I'm safe. And I'll take that over anything because you got people that have millions and don't ever feel safe. Their mind is unstable. Again. Been, been there, not with the, the money part, but it's like been there to where it's like you really, at one point I felt like I was a danger to myself. Like years, years ago, I've had, you know, those doubts where it's like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through the day. Like been there. So when you've had, you have been the lowest of the low and you finally get some true peace and some true joy and happiness, it's like, oh, we holding on to this. But dear life, I never want to lose this. You don't have any peace. That's why you can't sleep. When you know that you didn't do what, what the Lord has, has told you to do, you don't get any rest. So, yeah, you will be sitting on that bed meditating, Right? But even if you're not quite in that situation, it's like, okay, you might have to get up and sit up for a moment. Don't bow your head <laughs> if you're that tired. Just kind of sit up for a moment and really just be quiet. Even if you're, you know, washing dishes or something, just shh, silence some thoughts. Focus on his voice. And just be quiet. You know? If I, I was quiet for a, a while. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And after a while, the Lord spoke, right? Because I shut up long enough <laughs> to let him talk. And after he's like, do you realize you just meditated? I saw their phone, like, oh, you're right, God. You know, and he gave me the, you know, verse, Psalm 4 4, like today. And to read that again after, you know, this morning, I'm like, oh, he's confirming to me, like, yeah, I need you to be still, I need you to be quiet. Because that's also a form of meditating on the Word of God. Okay, y'all, we way over time. <sighs> but um, and we're actually not finished with this part, but that's okay. We'll come back to it. In the meantime, go and read over those chapters yourself. Look, you got time. I don't want to hear that. You got time. If you, you can spend an hour three hours or however long on social media and looking at people's statuses and reposting and resharing and this, that, and the other, you got time to at least read a verse a day or however, like you have time to get in his word. You have time. If you got to set a timer for five minutes, 
and just start with them five minutes a day of reading, then do that. Okay, start start somewhere. Stop making them excuses. All right, y'all. <laughs> too, too long. Let's go ahead and pray. Up. <laughs> Lord God, um, I truly just thank you that we have an opportunity to delight in you, to delight in your word, God, to have joy in the Lord. Um, but I just also want to pray for those people who may not be in a season where they feel any joy right now. Um, where they're looking up and it feels like every time, you know, they're trying, they're just being knocked down over and over again. Um, God, I pray that your word would just take root in their heart, that you would lead them to be steadfast in your word, that they would not stray away, um, you know, or be deceived or seduced by any lies of the enemy that, oh, if you do this way, you know, this will work out. Like, God, we are going to trust you. We're going to stand on your promises because your promises do not return void. You do everything that you say you're going to do. And when you say it, it's already done because your words are action. And we're believing you for that. We're hoping in that, God. We pray that you continue to grow your faith in us. God, reveal those things or people um, that are hindering our, our faith walk or maybe that we're just simply putting more emphasis or importance on over you that we have made into an idol. God, I pray that you would tear down every idol in our life so that we can draw closer to you. Uh, whatever things are separating us from your joy and your peace, your kindness, your love, God, I pray that you would destroy it so that we can truly experience what it is to have real prosperity and real peace. Teach us to be still in you, to meditate in your word, to pray, God, to truly seek your face, God. I pray for those people who might be fasting, Lord, that you, it would not be some bodily exercise because you said that doesn't profit us anything. But even in teach, teach them the importance of, of the fast, God, why they're doing it. So that it wouldn't be in vain. That it's not just the fast, God. You are the one who has the power to change things. It's a heart posture that you're calling us to. Let us heart, our hearts be postured to submit to you, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that you would continually seal these women um, to watch over all of us, to guide us through whatever season we're in in our lives, to remind us that you are still great I am, that we can come to you for anything and everything. It doesn't matter how small it is, how big it is. There's nothing we, we can do without you. So, Lord, I'm just asking that you just continue to guard our hearts, our minds, and let us be centered in you. And, God, if it's not of you, take it away. <laughs> take it away. All these things I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo. All right, ladies. My goodness. Uh, Y'all take care. Have a blessed week. And be sure to join us again for Thursday Bible study. Our Everybody Bible Study, the Bible Study for Everybody, same time, 7.30. Okay, bye, y'all. Bye, love you, bye.